Hey, everybody. Um, I'm excited to be here at my very first media party. Um, I'm going to uh, share my screen with you and talk about practical experiments with AI and news. Um, I'm the director of news partnerships at the Associated Press, and that job includes being involved in automation and artificial intelligence strategies for AP. So now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So we often talk about artificial intelligence in news uh, using um, images from the movies, uh, scary robots coming to take journalist jobs. Um, that is definitely not what I'm going to talk about here, and I don't believe that's true. Uh, we need to change the way we talk about using AI and news um, to a focus on how do we solve real world problems in the newsroom. So what are some of these problems that uh, AI solutions can help us deal with? Journalists are facing the fact that there are multiple and always changing platforms that audiences are uh, digesting their news on. More and more, we want to personalize our news uh, so that we can get them to engage with us. And how do we cope with the sea, infor sea of information out there? So the Associated Press has been using variations of automation and machine learning and AI solutions for six years now. We started with very simple, um, automatically generated stories in business news and now mainly in sports news. Um, we use natural language generation to create roughly 40,000 stories a year, uh, mostly around sports. Um, since six years ago, we've broadened those experiments to include things like um, how do we use event detection systems to scan social media to help us identify news events faster? Um, how do we use um, natural language processing to help us summarize news uh, faster? And those kinds of things. Um, today, I'm going to talk about one of our most uh, recent projects, um, which really only just got announced uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, that relates to our video operations. And as you can see here, we're focused very much on the problem of producing video more efficiently. Um, AP uh, produces so many videos and we've got so many hours of live video uh, that it can be very hard for our editors and our producers to keep up um, with that volume uh, without having to spend so much time on very routine tasks. So we look to machine learning to figure out uh, how can we help address this problem. For a couple of years now, we've been using uh, automated video transcription services. Uh, we work with Trent. Uh, based in London. Um, we started with some experiments around simply uh, using it to create transcripts more quickly. And now we've uh, combined that with our live video as well. Um, the second project, which is what I'm going to talk about in more detail, is how can we actually build a tool that reads the video and helps automatically generate a shot list and captions and things like that to help speed edits. So as you can see here, we had estimated that our editors and producers were spending 18,000 hours a year transcribing video. Um, that is not where we want our video journalists, you know, spending their time. We want them spending their time on, on doing more interesting things. So through Trent, we're not only speeding up that process and generating transcripts more quickly, um, we're using it now on all of our live feeds and um, roughly 800 hours a month 
of video that's being automatically transcribed. So this has really transformed our video operations and freed up a tremendous amount of time uh, to be working on other more interesting storytelling. And also um, it helps get transcripts and um, quotes and reports uh, to our news customers faster. The new project that we just introduced two weeks ago at the International Broadcasting Conference is uh, AI-enabled shot listing. Uh, we partnered with Al Jazeera and worked with four vendors to figure out how to build a system that could automatically uh, read the video and recognize faces and what's happening and then marry that with some other text technology to help um, generate shot lists and other items around video. So just as an example, so basically um, image recognition technology can recognize who's in the video. And then that combines with an understanding of narration of the video and also it can read what's happening in the video to produce what you can see on the left in the captioning field. The tool can start to automatically produce captions for the video. And then also what's you know, training the algorithm to understand the context and the action that's happening in the video. So you know knowing that you have two people shaking hands and being able to um, output that into the caption. So this is what the dashboard of the tool looks like on the um, editor's screen. And so you can see, I mean, it's a little hard to tell in the presentation, but essentially there's this idea that the tool is helping us read the video more effectively and give us that first, um, you know, that, that first cut of what's happening and essentially a draft script for the video that our editors can um, zero in on a soundbite more quickly or, you know, create a script more quickly, you know, and that kind of thing. So the whole goal is how do we speed up the process of video editing? How can we use these technologies to remove some of those manual production tasks um, and you know, just get a, a better and faster video edit? So the next step in working on building this tool is uh, training the algorithm to better recognize the mood or the, you know, the context of the scene. So, I mean, one of the central challenges is like, for example, if a video shows a crowd, um, well, it could be a crowd that's cheering something happy, or it could be a crowd that's protesting something it doesn't like and training the algorithms to recognize that kind of mood um, and sentiment is one of the more challenging aspects of this technology. So for us, that's the next step in this project. So I wanted to give you, that's an example of a specific project around video, but also it demonstrates how we at AP and many other news organizations approach using these technologies in our newsroom. It really has to start with a problem that you're trying to solve around, you know, your journalists not using their time efficiently, or, um, you know, how can we identify news faster or those kinds of things? What are our central problems? I do want to talk a little bit about one of the more exciting groups that are working on issues right now. And I would encourage anybody who's interested in using these technologies in newsrooms to connect with this group. Um, the Polis think tank at the London School of Economics uh, a couple of years ago began an effort called Journalism AI. And they started with 
a really wonderful survey of how newsrooms are using these technologies. And that has expanded into an actual collaboration where journalists all over the world are working together on a few key problems and trying to develop projects that will further our understanding of, of how to improve those. So um, hopefully you all can see um, the link to their site at the top of the page. Um, but of course, please do um, connect with me or others if you're interested in getting in touch uh, with them going forward, but I highly recommend. Um, and right now, the Journalism AI Collab are working on these five problems. So um, how do we use the technology to uh, leverage the fact that newsrooms have all of this archival content that's really not doing anything for us any longer. It's just this massive asset kind of, you know, waiting to be used. Um, you know, how can we help audiences find journalism that they want faster? So here, these are the five working groups that the collaboration is working on right now. And um, there's just been some great discussions and projects. Um, I wanted to zero in on an example of one of these groups, this idea of how can we use technology to faster create new forms of journalism from the same story, which can cut down on production time and also help personalize the news for people who want the news in different formats. Some might want to read a thousand word article, others just want a two sentence summary. Uh, maybe others want to read the story in five bullet points. Um, you can imagine that having your newsroom actually sit and create those formats would be time consuming and probably not a good use of their time. So this is a perfect example of a problem that um, natural language processing and other technologies can help us solve. So this slide just walks you through some of the groups thinking on it. Um, how do we get from problem and idea to creating something practical that comes out of that that might be used by the entire industry? Um, so I just wanted to, again, reinforce that when thinking about having a technology strategy or using artificial intelligence and machine learning in your newsroom, it's always starting with the problem we're trying to solve and then figuring out from there what the approach is. So I just want to finish uh, on this line that kind of gets back to uh, what I said earlier. Um, I think that in the past, there's been some dramatization around this notion that, um, you know, robots are going to take journalist jobs or, um, you know, that sort of storyline. And really, we have to think of these technologies as uh, augmenting or enabling the work of journalists um, to cover their topics and you know tell stories more efficiently. That's certainly how we at AP see it, and I know uh, how many of our partner organizations see it as well. So I just want to leave you with that sentiment, and uh, thank you again for having me. And I'm very excited to. Um, go into the breakout room and speak to you more about these projects. So thanks very much, and especially to Mariano for inviting me. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't know I was on. Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Um, sorry, I, I'll switch to Spanish, to, not to mess with the translators. Vuelvo al español para todos los que están siguiendo el canal en español y le van a traducir a Lisa. Eh, en mi presentación yo hablaba de que GPT-3 puede escribir cientos de notas en un minuto, Lisa acaba de decir que escribe miles de notas, así que me quedé muy corta. Eh, te quiero hacer una última pregunta, Lisa, que es, eh, eh, dado que se nos libera tiempo a los periodistas, ¿qué cosas deberíamos estar aprendiendo? ¿Qué cosas son las que ahora podemos aportar si eh, un, una inteligencia artificial va a estar editando nuestros videos eh, transcribiéndolos y también incluso detectando los sentimientos de los personajes. ¿Qué nos queda a nosotros a los periodistas y qué cosas nuevas en todo caso tenemos que aprender desde tu perspectiva? Eh, 
le damos tiempo a la traducción, me parece. Sí. <risa> Do you, do you want to just say it in English to me, Sonia? Oh, sorry. Yes, if you're Sonia, not having a translation. Yes, we don't, okay. we don't have yes. translation here, just, just for the audience. Sorry, my, my bad. So, yeah, I was asking you if AI is going to be solving all the routine, routine problems we journalists deal with, then what do we need to learn to add something to the process? What, what should be our role now that videos are going to be edited automatically? I mean, I think there's there's several answers to that question. Um, one is that I think journalists need to be more open than they have been to the use of tools uh, in their work um, and uh, be adaptable to changes and evolutions of these tools, uh, which is not always the case. It can be very difficult to change and learn these new technologies and adapt our workflow to them. Um, beyond that, I do think that uh, we need much more data literacy um, and understanding of data and how to use data in newsrooms. And I'm not talking just about data scientists and data engineers, which of course we do need, but I'm talking about, you know, even kind of basic and intermediate fluency with data and how that can inform, you know, our beats as well as our workflow. Um, I don't think that we're quite ready for that um, as much as we should be. So I would say, you know, today's technology around artificial intelligence or machine learning or anything else, well, we don't know what that's going to look like two years from now or five years from now. So um, it's not about learning AI, you know, it's more about kind of those fundamental uh, principles of data and adaptation and change that I think I would stress. Excellent. And I hope the media party is going to be uh, letting us learn a lot on that. <laughs> and then exactly. I also wanted to, to tell you that I'm sure you're going to have many people from Latin America joining the, the group at the LSC soon. So expect a, a, a crowd <laughs> going there. I hope soon. so. I, mean, I, I will. The industry has really needed those kinds of groups that um, can develop projects working together, you know, because we all don't have research and development teams and fancy data scientists necessarily. We all really need to be working together. And also there's a real opportunity and need to develop best practices. You know, how do we use these technologies in an ethical and responsible way? You know, what are the standards around data and, um, you know, creating automatically generated stories. Well, you know, there has to be um, a s ethical principles that inform how we do that. So, um, so groups like the LSE group really help to create those fundamental principles um, throughout the world. Excellent, we'll be there. So uh, thank you so much, Lisa, for being here. We'll give you a silent applause. Um, yes, from all yes. of us. Uh, and, and we'll see you later on on the Sofa Hub. And so people, uh, I, I switch to Spanish now. Estén atentos, hoy hay un Sofa Hub with Lisa y muchos otros más. También les recuerdo a todos que estamos en las redes sociales, a full, el hashtag es Media Party. Somos un montón, eh, estamos todavía acomodándonos a hacer todo esto por Zoom, antes lo hacíamos en el Conex y viéndonos las caras eh, en persona era más fácil. Pero, pero ya nos estamos acomodando y empieza a fluir mucho más. Así que, thank you, Lisa.